Hi everyone and welcome to CBRE FlexCast, our thought leadership docu-series where we feature the pioneers of the Indian flex industry and bring their stories, vision and capabilities to the world. I'm Pulkit Bakshi, Head Flexible Workspace Solutions at CBR India and today I'm at a Smartworks managed campus in Bangalore where we shall be meeting the Smartworks founders for an engaging conversation about their company and their views on the past, present and future of the flex industry in India. So with that quick introduction, let's finally meet the Smartworks leadership and begin this episode. Hey Ritish, Hi. welcome to FlexCast. Massive place you've got out here, man. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to the world's largest flex space. Is it? Yeah, it's uh, wow. 700 and change thousand square foot spread across two towers uh, with over about 15 to 16,000 seats in it. Wow. And how full is it uh, currently? Currently, it's at about 85% occupancy. So you've got on a daily basis about eight and a half, nine thousand people coming here already. And then it's going to go up to about 12, 13,000. A couple of floors are under construction. But as soon as that comes in, it'll go up to about 12, 13,000. Uh, people on a daily basis coming to the building. And broadly, how old is this place? Uh, we signed the, it's divided into two towers. So we signed the first tower in October um, and it became operational around November or December. And then the second tower we signed uh, in April and it's getting operational, it got operational in uh, May, end of May. Interesting, that's quite fast. So basically around 10,000 seats in less than what, 10 months is what yeah, you've got around. It's, well, uh, it, it's been a good journey for this building. I think the location hmm. uh, uh, works very well. Uh, a lot of the clients who were our existing clients actually took up a significant portion uh, of the building and pre-committed, not pre-committed, but uh, were interested in the space and we could fill it up very quickly. You know, that makes me ask, right? Uh, by some people you're known as the person who pioneered the flex or managed campus concept in yeah. India and maybe perhaps the world. So how did that come about to be? Uh, how did you think of this model and why did you pursue it? No, I thought, you know, really for us co-working was something that didn't really work out, right? When we also started pretty much like everyone else are, everyone talks about journey, you know, for us it wasn't journey, it was a roller coaster ride, right? <laughs> there were so many ups and downs which had uh, really happened. But I think uh, we also started pretty much like a co-working where we did a floor in a building. We realized that there wasn't really much of a differentiator. And mm. for us, with our exposure, um, you know, both me and Harsh have, have studied abroad. We've been to the offices of, you know, some of the large corporates and seen their campuses. The um, amenities that you give, you're able to provide in a large setup uh, is, is uh, you know, they cannot be replicated in some of the smaller formats. So we were always ambitious to go after the large formats. Uh, I think uh, for us, we don't like to think of ourselves as just providing workstation and chairs. We like to think of ourselves as providing an experience. When we look at a building, we're looking at people coming and spending 10 hours in the building. They need to spend 10 hours not just working, right? They need to have some sort of a breakout area. You need to have uh, amenities like our gaming zones. There's like cricket, futsal, uh, there's theatres, all of those amenities that people can see or spend some time of their day uh, within those spaces, right? And um, I think the biggest philosophy that we were going after was the more amenities that you can provide in a setup like this, the more likely the client is to attract better talent uh, within those facilities, yeah. right? So our focus has always been not just getting the client, but also making sure that the employees of the client are as, uh, uh, you know, happy in the space as possible. A lot of the names that I read uh, on your head mask there are organizations that otherwise have built and can build uh, good offices for them uh, anywhere in the country, right? So why are these companies choosing to go for a managed office model instead of their uh, own offices? And in that also, why do they end up choosing Smartworks essentially? Honestly, in this era that we are in, right? Who wants to have the hassle of running their own offices when it's not their core business? Right? Okay. If you look at most of the clients who are sitting with us, uh, whether it's a technology company or a BFSI, work, Creating offices is an added cost on their uh, business, right? And workspaces have now become, um, you know, the, the flexibility requirement in workspaces has gone up significantly. If you look at people taking up contracts for three years, they don't want to make an office for three years if they have a contract for three years, right? It doesn't make sense for you to spend that much time, effort and money on creating those infrastructure, right? If someone like us can come in, provide them a solution and not only provide them a solution in a location, but provide them a solution across 14 cities in the in the country, which is pretty much standardized, right? Every center of smart works that you go to, you're going to have the 
the same amenities that you're seeing in this building, whether it's the gyms, the creches, the cafeterias, all of this will be replicated in every center. If you can create a standardized experience for a customer who's looking at multiple offices uh, and some flexibility in their in their take ups, why won't they come to a provider like us, right? You know, if you look at um, you know how service departments have really shared or share in shared economy, look at what Uber and Ola have done uh, in the market, right? They've been able to create by value engineering your uh, cars and the utilization of the cars, we are doing the same thing in office spaces, right? You're just value engineering, taking out those part of your offices which you don't use on a regular basis. Put it out in the common area so that 20 other people's ca people can use it. And then giving that benefit back to the customers while providing the flexibility. Oh, absolutely. And you know, while we look around some of the other amenities that you were talking about, the other question that I have, right? So some people may have a perception that uh, a flex office in the long run, right, on a managed office, essentially can be a very expensive offering. And the reason for which is, of course, the operators uh, charging a premium over everything. So they sometimes vary of going for this kind of product in the long run. So my question is that, how do you remain financially, because you mentioned, right, some people sign up for you, sign up with you for three years, some people five years, how do you remain financially viable for those customers over this no, Our ambition is, again, to be more economical than traditional office spaces, right? And that, that's what we are continuously working towards. How can we reduce our cost of operations? How can we reduce our cost of construction? Because uh, at the end of the day, if you want a customer to stick with you for a long term, you can't ask premium for flexibility. The, the secret sources you ask, you give them at a, at a discounted rate and provide them the flexibility. That is why you can scale up much quicker. And that's one of the reasons that we take up large formats like this and are able to fill it up in five to six months, right? Because we don't, we show the value addition to the customer that when they enter into this facility, they are getting all of these amenities, which typically they won't have been able to find unless and until they go to a large tech park and take up a large space. Hmm. Um, they won't have been able to find these uh, uh, amenities. You're finding this at a fraction of a cost. Right, so our our entire mantra is not to be a premium, super premium product, a very value priced product, uh, which makes sure that the customer are also sticking with us for long terms. And that's why you'll see most of the customers who come with us are we don't do co working deals with 40, 50 seats. Our average seat seats are about 300 seats per customer, uh, yeah. and the average lock in tenure is north of three years. So, Nitish, great insight on the origin of the managed campus concept. But uh, I'm curious to know how did, uh, what is the origin story of SmartWorks, right? How did you come about uh, making this company or thinking about it? I actually started SmartWorks right out of college. Okay, I was studying in America and then mm. Singapore. Uh, mm. And then I came back to India in end of 2015. Mm. I, in 2016, when I was thinking about SmartWorks, hmm. I went to a few offices and offices were quite boring here in India. Like there was nothing much to do <laughs> there, right? It was just workstation and chairs. You're not really creating an environment in which people can engage or talk to each other. And I, honestly, when I initially started, I thought co-working was the solution, right? Hmm. Where Because you could see how a co-working space could create a vibrant environment where people Correct. can engage better, right? Correct. But uh, we realized very quickly that co-working wasn't really something that's scalable in India. You know, the Indian thesis is very different. You've got uh, volumes here, you've got people in which decision makers are the ones who are actually sitting in this space. Uh, so I wanted to create a model which works both for engagement as well as uh, is value conscious so that uh, too much engagement is also not there, right? Because uh, some of the large enterprises, they, are, they don't want their employees to be com constantly engaging with others, right? They also want them to work. So you needed to create a balance. So we thought of this concept in which can you create a product which is the best of both worlds, right? It gets you the best from traditional office spaces and gets you the best from uh, flexible workspaces. So in our head, we like to think of ourselves as best of the both worlds, right? And the amenities that you provide within these facilities, like like look at the, we have this thing called the smart store, right? right. Now this is basically 10,000, 12,000 people coming in the building. They have consumables. People can order, uh, they can come and buy it from here. People can mm. order groceries order it online here while going back home, just pick up the bag and take it home, right? All of those amenities we're solving for people. Similarly, look at like food, uh, you know, that's a big thing for us. Uh, again, we offer lunch, breakfast, dinner. People can just order food on their app, come here, pick up the uh, their thalis whenever they want to. They can then subscribe to meal or they can order from some of the other kiosks, right? You've got five or six different 
options spread across uh, the And these the are different building. vendors you've partnered with? They're all different vendors with different cuisines that we've partnered with. Uh, that also we try to make it as uh, you know, informative to the client as possible, get a, lo a lot of feedback from the customers wherever possible. Um, and uh, you know, all of this is done through our technology platform. Thanks, Adesh, for that treat. So yes, you know, like you were talking about, um, a lot of uh, a lot of this can happen for people as an experience because of the scale you've been able to build. Uh, you know, uh, because of the size of facilities you have. But was this inspired from somewhere? Like for example, I know you didn't like the concept of offices in India when you came in, but since you started in the US and then you went to Singapore, did you see something similar outside which sort of inspired you to make this kind of a product? I don't know if I saw something similar in terms of uh, the entire aspect of, of smart, what Smartworks is today. But I think I, obviously we learned from bits and pieces of what we saw uh, in, in different locations, you know, in places where there are large crowds, how do you uh, handle that in order to entice people, like for example the food, uh, yeah. what are the things that you can use to entice people or create that happiness factor uh, coming in. All of these have been learning from different aspects of, of, of life, right? It's not just how does design very, very important uh, in our uh, in our office spaces, all of those things have been learning from from different places. I won't say that we've we I saw a model which I replicated here, right? Because I don't think India works that way, right? You can't get a a, a Western model here and just replicate it and hope that it works here, right? It is Correct. very difficult. The Indian mindset, the consumer mindset, is very very uh, different. You need to understand that consumer mindset, make it as Indian as possible uh, hmm. before creating a, a product here. Do you sometimes feel that you compete with developers or large tech parts in some locations, uh, like or, or not? Or... No, uh, <laughs> controversial question. But um, no, I, I think honestly, we we don't think of ourselves competing with with just flex spaces, right? Hmm. For us, actually, eighty to ninety percent of our customers are customers who are looking at traditional office spaces mm -hmm. uh, or who are within campus office uh, set settings and they want uh, to shift their offices or have a standardized office experience across uh, the country. So we typically compete with traditional office spaces. I wouldn't say that we compete with co-working or managed office solutions mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at this building, right, 38 customers, uh, almost 32 to 33 of them have come from other traditional office spaces. They've left their own traditional office space and uh, you know, moved into our setup. Hmm. So it's not like they're they're moving from co-working to co-working or they're just starting their businesses here. So it's more companies who understand what they want in their office space. We give them more value-added services by getting into our ecosystem and then they're moving those traditional office space into, into smart works. Got it. And does that make you sometimes want to buy or build your own buildings to have a future smartworks? Why not? The aspiration is obviously there. Uh, you know, the eventual aim obviously of smartworks is to create create that entire ecosystem, uh, you know, in which we are able to deliver uh, not only just the space, but also other services. And for that, if we acquire buildings in the future, currently we own a couple of buildings that we uh, 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 we work with smartworks, but the idea is we're going faster uh, at this point of time and our focus is always going to be towards leasing these buildings. But if the opportunity comes and you're able to create an entire experience from the sketch, then why not? You know, Nitish, as always, it's been a very engaging and insightful discussion with you and thank you for answering all of my questions so vividly. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you so much everyone for tuning into the first Smartworks episode of Lexcast. We'll be back again with part two uh, with Mr. Harsh Binani. So stay tuned.